In this video I'm trying out the Peebo Vitria 160 glass paints. It is from a beginner's perspective, I've never done glass painting before, but I'll be passing on all of the tips that I've learned from this project over the last three or four weeks. I did manage to create two acceptably painted coasters. It took around nine non-consecutive days. So do use the timestamps or the chapters in the video description just to jump around to whichever part that you might like to watch. So what I've got is this outliner in black. It's a 20mm tube and it costs £5.30 from Hobbycraft. I also have four of these 45mm jars of the glass paint in pepper red, turquoise, emerald and sun yellow. Each of these pots costs £5.80 from Hobbycrafts. So it's not one of the cheapest um, craft projects to try, but hey ho. I also started out with four of these glass coasters to decorate. So the outliner is packaged in one of those really hard plastic containers that's virtually impossible to open without a pair of scissors. I'm sure a cardboard box would be sufficient to protect it from getting squished, but apparently not. Once you've battled with getting it out of the packaging, you simply need to unscrew the cap and the nozzle to pierce the foil at the top of the tube. I did try using the nozzle to do this, that doesn't work. You will need to use a pair of scissors or a craft knife. So my first attempts at using the outliner were a bit wobbly and dodgy to be quite honest with you. It does need a very, very steady hand. I tried various different methods of applying the outliner. I tried gliding it across the glass. That didn't work at all. I tried applying it slowly. I tried applying it quickly. I found I was getting a lot of little blobs and blemishes where I was um, hesitating or adjusting my squeeze so it was coming out the tube too quickly or too slowly. So after several failed attempts, I found that if you lift the nozzle about four to six millimeters above the glass, you get much better results. It is a delicate balance of the right squeeze and the right speed. So to achieve straight lines, I found that moving the tube left to right was most comfortable. For me, I'm right-handed. I also found that it was best to double check that my arm was fully supported by the table and that I could move my arm freely the whole length of the project. I also found that turning my work as I needed to meant that I maintained that consistency with the flow. It takes a lot of concentration and it does get easier with practice. The tube does go a long way. I have drawn lots and lots and lots of these lines that have been washed off and peeled off until I managed to get the result that I wanted. So do be prepared to practice. As you use the paint, the tube kind of indents in the middle and it makes it harder to maintain a constant squeeze speed. Squeeze speed? Where'd I make that up from? Tension, I mean tension. So it's a little bit like a tube of toothpaste in a way. Don't roll over the end of the tube really, really tightly because the paint will erupt out of the end of the nozzle as soon as you take the cap off. Trust me on that one. 
So instead what I found was with the cap on, just flatten the end of the tube to move the paint down to the nozzle end, but not so much that it will cause a big eruption. Leave a little bit of room for play. Just another thing that I should mention is on the first squeeze when you've taken the cap off, the paint can sometimes buckle under itself. I just wiped that away with a piece of tissue paper or kitchen towel and then I had no problem with any additional blobs. The outliners dry in about three hours. Well, that's how long I left them for and I went back to see them. On most attempts, I did leave them overnight to dry. If you make a mistake and you want to start the whole project again, if the outliner is still wet, you can just wash the project in the sink and dry off your glass and it'll be fine. If it's dry, you can simply peel off your mistakes. On this one, I had a really, really wobbly line. I wanted to remove it, so I simply used a craft knife to kind of press down to make a clean cut. If you're doing this, I recommend that you press with the craft knife and not pull in a cutting motion, because when you drag the knife along, it can cause a little bit of stretching in the outliner. So I had heard that you can reapply dry lines to your project or to a different project. So I created lots of lines, some of them were a bit straighter than others. And what I did was I let those dry and I came back to them the next day. All you need to do is pull the dried lines away from the glass. Don't pull too hard as you are removing them or you'll stretch them and they'll become a little bit distorted. And some of these that I made were a bit unusable because they were far too wiggly. So it was actually really easy to apply these to the coaster. They do stretch a little bit too, which is handy because some of them are a little bit too short. Just a quick tip that if they touch each other on the table before you put them on the glass, they will stick together, which is great when you're applying them to the glass because once they're stuck together, once they kind of touch, that's it. You won't get them apart again. They're kind of tacky, but not sticky. It's a bit difficult to describe, but the fact that they stick well together on the glass is a bonus, especially when I had to stretch one of them a little bit. So as a quick summary, be prepared to practice. It's very unlikely that your very first line will be straight and perfect, but if you hold the nozzle up four to six millimeters from the glass, you will achieve a better result. And do practice. Get yourself um, an insert from a photo frame, a spare piece of glass, and use that to just practice on before you do your final piece. And do remember that from those practice lines, you can just peel them off once they're dry and apply them to your main project. I do think using the outliner is a little bit like um, icing a cake with those writing icing tubes. So if you're a baker and you know how to use those writing icing tubes, you'll probably be an expert at using the outliner. Do make sure that you have free movement of your arm and do keep the pressure and movement consistent. You can use a craft knife to modify the outliner slightly, which is very useful if you've got a little bit of a blob. You can just cut some of that blob away. 
So the paint itself, I was quite surprised by its consistency. It's quite thick, much thicker than acrylic paint um, or enamel, but it's also quite gloopy as well. A little bit like custard maybe, honey, more like honey actually, but not sticky. So to get a smooth finish, I had to put quite a lot of paint on. And if I didn't put a lot of paint on, it was visibly patchy. And I could tell by the consistency of the paint that it was going to dry that way because it didn't like kind of melt into itself like some paints do. The other thing that I noticed was that the paint started to separate from the black lines. I was painting in between the black lines and trying to make sure that I was getting right up to the edges. But when I went back to look at the coaster, I could see that there were gaps appearing. And I tried putting more paint on to try and fill those gaps, but it kept kind of just shrinking back. What I realized is, is that you need to brush the paint slightly over the black lines because this paint is so gloopy and strange that it likes to adhere to itself in some way. I'm not really sure why, but brushing over the outliner just a little bit, just to the top of the ridge was enough to stop that shrinkage from occurring. I had to lift my project up to the light to see if there were any gaps because they weren't always noticeable. But if you do, I recommend that you keep your project flat to stop the paints from running. <laughs> so I also found out that it was a really good idea to allow each colour to dry, each adjacent colour to dry before applying the next colour. On mine, the colours ran into each other because they were both still wet. When I added the blue paint and the emerald paint to the coasters, I found that they were very, very dark and I, I wasn't very happy with the colours. In fact, on this green and blue one, it just looked like a mass of blackcurrant jelly. And I was hoping they might dry a bit lighter, so I just left them to dry to see what would happen. They didn't lighten up. In fact, once they were dry, you couldn't even see through the glass. It was so dark. They were not the colours that I was expecting at all. The paint at this thickness takes a long time to dry. They did dry overnight, but they took more than a few hours. So I was quite disappointed with the colours, so I peeled everything off and started again. Very easy to do. You just pick it at the edge and pull. It's a little bit like um, pulling PVA glue off your fingertips. Quite satisfying in a strange, strange way. So I was really unhappy with the colour of the blue and the green paint. As I've already said, if you painted it on too thinly, it just looked streaky. And if you painted it on too thick, it just looked dark. So it says it's water-based, so I had the epiphany that maybe I could dilute them down with a bit of water. It doesn't work. This is what happened. The water eventually just evaporated and left me with a streaky little blob of colour. After much research, and honestly, it was quite hard to find, I found out that you need to use a glass paint thinner. I was fuming. Why not just sell the paint in a good consistency to start with? So everything was put on hold until I could get to Hobbycraft. Not a problem. I quite like going to Hobbycraft. There's usually something I need every week, so it wasn't a big problem. Yeah, so I was fuming. I mean, why not just sell the right colour in the first place? That would be a brilliant idea, but no. You're supposed to have a glass thinner. Nowhere on the bottle says you should use a glass thinner. Yeah, 
That also cost £5.80. It had no instructions. I had no idea what ratio I needed. What I have found out with the thinner is that you need a lot more thinner than you need paint. And when I tried it the first time, I thought maybe I hadn't quite mixed it enough. So with the blue one, I ensured that I gave it a really good mix. I had about a teaspoon of the paint thinner in the palette. And then I just kept adding a few drops of blue until I got the color that I wanted. The paint with the thinner in it is very, very runny. It's thicker than water, a little bit more like vegetable oil, I'd say. And I do think that it'd be really hard to use it if the surface wasn't a flat surface. And because it's so much runnier than the paint straight from the jar, don't tip your glass. It does spill over the edge very, very easily and it will flood into the next section. Trust me, I've been there. So even with the thinner, and even though I made sure that I mixed it really, really well, I could still see that some of the areas were lighter than others. So I did try adding a second coat on one of the coasters to see what happened, and it just went really, really dark again, and I was yeah, quite disappointed with it. So at the end of it all, I had four coasters and two of them were not particularly great. One of them was so bad that I peeled it off. That was the one that I tried to put the extra coat on. So I baked three of the coasters in the oven and I popped them in the oven on the middle shelf and I put the oven temperature to just over 160 degrees and I set my timer for 45 minutes. The instructions say that you should bake them for 40 minutes but I added an extra five minutes for the preheating. Once the dinger had done on the oven I turned the oven off and I just left the coasters in the oven to cool down. There was no colour changes I could notice and on the green coaster I thought because this is the rubbish coaster I'm going to see if it's baked on hard enough. I did manage to chip a little bit of the outliner off the very edge of the glass. I have super tough fingernails and it did take quite a bit of pressure to just chip the edge off but when I tried on different areas I wasn't able to chip any off at all. So the next test was to put this green one in the dishwasher. I just put it on an eco cycle, but I put it on the top shelf of the dishwasher and I put it face up. Once it had finished its cycle, I pulled it out of the dishwasher and it was perfectly fine. There was no color changes. There was no extra chips or marks or anything on it at all. And it was still very firmly fixed to the glass. So the baking and the dishwasher test pass. So I did manage to create two good coasters, but what I did notice is where I used the full strength color, the paint is less translucent. You can see just by me waving my hand underneath. So it might be a good idea to 
lighten the red at some point. I need to test this. I am going to revisit this at some point. I'm going to do a part two of this video and I'm going to test how much thinner you need versus the paint. And I'm also going to try and test painting on a curved surface, maybe a bottle or a glass or a tumbler or something. I hope that you've picked up something from this video, from the things that I've learned. Do give me a thumbs up if you have, and do give me a thumbs up if you've made it this far as well. Your support is genuinely very much appreciated. And if you've got any helpful tips or tricks to pass on, do leave them in the comments below. I'm quite sure that they will help not only me when I go on to do part two of this glass painting project, but I'm quite sure it will help someone else that's watching the video later as well. So yeah, thank you for watching and do subscribe if you'd like to see more of my content.